times or three okay. times wider. Okay, this is old camp. And this is not a spring chicken today. We're going to give you a preview yeah. of Christmas. You say it's going. Is it too early for Christmas? Well, actually. They've been selling stuff at Costco since a month ago. I know. And by the time you have seen this, it'll be in the second month of, mm -hmm. the third month of selling by the time this comes on. But, um, but we're going to let you know about some of our plans. One, we're making multiple. Um, uh, buying guides this year. We are. Yeah, we're putting it all together right now. You know, we're getting things that uh, we think that people will like, and because we like them, actually, we're trying some of the things out to see if they actually work. Part of it is we like to put things together that are totally unique. Yeah, <laughs> somebody else knows how to add most of our stuff. So, mm -hmm. because you can go to. Um, yeah, well, some of the places, for instance, there are no buying guides in, in automotive aftermarket. We did one last year, but we didn't do it until after we were at SEMA. This year we're going to be doing uh, our guide, I think, before we go to SEMA. Yeah, I think we're going to, too. Because it comes out... You know, Actually, we'll do our holiday buying guide and then we'll do a SEMA one afterwards. Yeah, but um, we're also going to have it, we're going to be uh, on, hopefully we're going to have it up on the, uh, you know, Maybe over on Yahoo to our buying guide, so you don't know. Mm. 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 I know part of it is I can't resist it because I love these coconut water things. Yeah. That's what I say. But unfortunately, I'm restricted about what I can drink and stuff. I think you can have coconut water. I don't know what I can have, but I have my teeth then. You know, the old, you know, the whitening and the light, mm, which is no fun. 20 minutes with a light in your face. Mm -hmm. It's got to be done again a couple of more times, I think, because I drink too much tea. Mm -hmm. But um, but we're also going to be doing, you know, besides the buying guides, we're going to be giving you once again, you know, the history of Christmas, which we do every year. And um, we're also going to be doing a musical this year for people that will be available, hopefully, on your local stations in 3D. I mean, um, what we're going to do is we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to make it available in 2D and 3D for your your station station you decide whether to carry it in 2d or 3d mm -hmm. but um you know anybody that wants to sponsor an hour-long christmas special <laughs> we'd be, with up-and-coming actors with, and actresses yeah but with some some um powerful history and musicals behind a lot of them though. yeah you know been some big name musicals some of these people have been in but the musical isn't done much anymore because what and like, and what happened, we've been finding out the hard way, you can't even do a piece of music anymore uh, without uh, being clipped by a third party now, which means those are the people that actually worked on the project are now coming after I know, that's money. the bad part about it. I mean, killing them. The, the music industry was already killed before, now they're trying to re-kill it. Yeah, uh, and that's the problem is if, okay, there are certain things, where, and like everybody knows, I mean, okay, um, uh, oh, 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 little town of Bethlehem, you know, our silent night, oh, holy night. You know, those are basically, you know, the traditional like, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle round the clock. But if you go, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle round the clock, Wait, you basically... You go all the way? You know, it's jingle, but see, if you change the lyrics a little bit and you use that, that basically you change the uh, the lyrics just a slight bit, and you, you and you use uh, a full thing, uh, the full version of that, you use somebody else's arrangement. Mm -hmm. When you use their arrangement, then they can basically make certain that you pay for it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not how you should be doing business. I'm from an era. When my, okay, you, you did an acting job once and you got paid for that one time. That was it. The day you do an acting job, you expect to get paid for doing it the rest of your life. And it's the same way, um, I know people that are in the music business that are being shut down on YouTube for their own music because the people that recorded the music are suing them in court. Well, you didn't pay us for being on the internet. Well, that's exactly what the song was written for, was to be on the internet so they could sell the internet copies, the downloads. Because you didn't pay us for that, because you didn't pay us for it, you're never going to sell the thing, so they take the sites down. Major performers in the industry that are having their stuff soon mm -hmm. taken down by musicians. Mm -hmm. So um, it makes it difficult to put together a Christmas special in which um, that you're not going to get clobbered by somebody that did an arrangement 
you know, 50 years ago. Nobody remembers that version of the song anymore because you're like, I mean, Beyonce's done Ave Maria and, uh, and uh, Dean Butler, you know, his band, the European version of, uh, the uh, version of Elvis Presley. They've all done their version, which basically was actually written by Sir Walter Scott and it's called Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. But um, if you use the version that everybody, the, the arrangements that are used today, which are the popular arrangements, if you use the Paviati version, it gets you in trouble. Because that version did not exist. And it's within the time zone now. So everything you have to do, either have, we're, we're actually, we're going to, we're going to, to do, our, we're going to do arrangements you've never heard of. You have never heard the arrangements that you're going to hear for any of the popular music that you're going to be hearing. None of them. So uh, there's going to be a different thing there, which causes a problem. We've been actually been going through the system on our out of tune piano, but I do have two keyboards. I have two MIDI. They, they don't get out of tune. They don't get out of mm -hmm. tune. But I have to go get. I, we'll have to get. Them. Actually, I did my story to put them somewhere. But um, they're going to hear a lot of younger people and uh, and maybe a few older ones. Mm -hmm. that, you know, that are going to be on a thing. It's going to be done. Basically, in a style we hope people like, but the problem comes with that, you know, what anybody likes anymore. So, I mean, nothing, nobody, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, you know, um, the collapsing of all the TV shows that tried to go backwards in time this year shows that basically it's very hard to pick out something that someone watched from the past. And as most people understand, most Christmas music is five, 500 years old in some cases. Are you serious? That old? Yeah. A lot of them are 500 wow. years old. A lot of them, over the time, a span, a span of time, the lyrics have been changed a lot on them. And the closer you get to the year 2011, the more likely is the music that you've heard has a popular arrangement and not the original arrangement. The original arrangements are entirely different because they didn't have the instrumentation, you know, uh, that they do now. So um, you, you don't see, a, you won't see a full symphony version of Silent Night because it wasn't written. You, what you will do, a lot of the music, and this was like for Handel, Handel also wrote um, uh, one of the songs we were looking at, and then Jingle Bells wrote by another person. Silent Night was wrote by a priest. Um, uh, basically, um, uh, one of the songs, one of the great British songs they played during World War II, you know, uh, is actually a historical, um, uh, it's basically an old, Irish song. It's not an English song. All through the night, you know, da 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 da. First time I ever heard that song was in a Alec Guinness movie. I heard the guy. Um, uh, basically, most people. I don't know if they know about the uh, European, you know, song festival and stuff. And it had to do with a couple of Welshmen wanting to get to uh, to the film the film festival, and um, and it just seemed like a typical American musical. Of course, everywhere they went, there were people that could play music. You know, there was a harpist, there was a violinist, there was a, a guitar player, there was a pianist, and they're trying to get to the film. They're trying to get to the music festival so they could. All they ever sang was. Da, da, da. had it on one range, but the piano on another, and everybody, but the guy never sang it any different. But this, you know, as an English actor who I never heard sing before, I mean, this guy had been, you know, around for 50, 60 years now. God, the guy had a massively powerful baritone. Never sang again, but that's how they do musicals. You know, pick out somebody, you know, like uh, most people don't know who Cornell Wilde is. Cornell Wilde was a great action actor in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. He produced his own movies as he got older too, you know. Um, uh, but uh, he could sing like you would not believe. Um, uh, the Joker, uh, you know, uh, Cesar Romero had a great singing voice. The actor John Payne, who people remember from noir things like Kansas City Confidential, Phoenix Confidential, The Restless Gun, he could sing and dance. Victor Mature could sing. 
See, and most of these people I've never even heard of. Because they're from my time period, folks. But what happened is, they, they all had an actor called Lee Bowman, who was really a great singer. He was a radio performer. They moved into the movies. Uh, he stopped singing. Uh, Rita, uh, uh, we're talking, um, uh, Ava Gardner came from Broadway to sing. Let's sing one time. That's it? One time. They had other people dub her voice. The great singer, dancer, Rita Castino. That's uh, Rita Hayworth, was never allowed to sing. After, after She made movies for years where she, you know, when she was Castillo. And then it, when she became Rita Hayworth, they never let her sing again. Somebody else dubbed her voice. But, uh, but um, the, the biggest problem today is, like I said, it's third party. And we're working on how to bring something for Christmas to people that we're not going to have a third party complain about. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, she just went through, I just showed her a thing last night on what you can no oh, longer do. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Actually, that's a whole other topic which we should talk about. My gosh, it's just like... Yeah. The it's, third party complaints have basically got to shut down the whole universe. Talk about lit, lit, you know, litigation. Litigious. I mean, it is horrible, but we're, we're trying to sit there and put everything together because right now, our this musical thing has to be put together by the uh, last of October and be ready to be... It's got to be done for November because, I mean, if... I don't know how many people are going to watch this, but if you'd really like to see... Um, you know, old-fashioned Christmas music being sang the way they were originally meant to be sang. You know, people sitting around, maybe the, uh, you know, we're not going to do chestnuts roasting on open fire. That was written by Mel Parnay in the 1940s. That'd get you sued. <laughs> we will be sitting around stuff that you'd expect a lot of young people in Hollywood to be sitting. This is Hollywood, folks. This is not, this is not New England. This is not Ma Michigan. This is not you know, Oregon, this is a Hollywood style Christmas thing. With people doing what you would expect them to be do at a Hollywood function, which is being bored to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I think maybe a little bit of magic, Christmas magic here and there, you'll see what's gonna happen, but it, it, it's gonna turn the people being bored, bored into a joyous occasion, which is all about Christmas. I can always, everybody knows, I'll tell people the end song because everybody knows you're going to end the thing with Silent Night. Why, why does everybody think that? Because Silent Night is the only song that most people can all remember and sing along to. Silent Night, oh holy night, all is right. You know, that's, um, most, most people can remember the lyrics to that song, so you end up, you always come, okay, uh, basically you, you open light and you finish strong. That's what I learned from Jerome Kern. Yeah, I, how old am I? Yeah, showboat, I knew that, I met the guy. He was a young person when I met him, folks, so, I never even heard of him. you know, he wrote, <laughs> Old Man River, that old man river. She just keeps going right along. Yeah, that's Old Man Showboat, folks. But um, that's all you can do and get away with without being sued. It's, uh, you know, that's not even the amount of bars, that's just words. But um, he said you always open light and you finish strong. So we'll open light with some music, maybe some music you've never really heard, but our standard Christmas and we will, we're going to tell you, and basically as we go along, we're going to explain exactly what we're going to do because this is sort of going to be an interactive Christmas special, folks, because you're going to get to talk to us while we're getting it done or we're working on it. Oh, they are? Yeah. If you, uh, you know, well, between now and the day when we're shooting, we'll let you know, you know, and you can tweet us. Our Facebook is while the shooting is going on. We'll tell you when it's being done. And you can send things to us during the time it's being done. So, because you want to boost the, depending on any music, we're going to be your piano, folks. We're not going to have a, you know, you just bring a keyboard and go like this. No, no full orchestra. You're going to have a lot of panicky you're people. Going like this. That uh, is it, and it's not going to be being played in anybody's key. So it's going to be, you know. It, it, it's going to be, you know, uh, it's going to be two-part harmony, three-part harmony, choral. Everybody's going to get together, and um, so you can tell us while it's being done, you know, 
you, you know, we'll even do some of the stuff on, we'll do some of the stuff live while it's being done. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really different. You're actually going to get to see a Christmas special as it's being done. You know, you're not going to get to see the whole thing because if I let you see the whole thing, what's the reason for watching it later? But, you know, you'll get to see, you know, we'll turn the cameras on a little bit and then we'll turn the cameras off and then we'll turn the cameras on and turn the cameras off. And you may even get to see some of it being done live in 3D. Wouldn't that be neat? You know, get your little 3 and you know, get your little 3D glasses out, your antidepressants and sit there, ooh, look at that, this is an occasion. But, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, you know uh, here's my side. I'm putting, I'm doing the technical side. She's doing the talent side. I have no clue of what she's telling the people at talent side, and she has no clue of what I'm putting together. <laughs> it's a good I time. really have no clue what he's putting together. I just find my friends that are actors and actresses that can sing. Yeah. And that's when you want to sing? You want to sing? You're going to do well, Okay. Yeah, you want to sing. You want to get an opportunity to do something, to, to entertain people at a time when people need really to be entertained. That's why the... the the musicals came about in the 1930s because we were going through the Great Depression and hit and people were really, you know, like, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? You know, or, you know, uh, some of the great songs, you know, the, you know, uh, you know uh, some of the songs, you know, like the man, you know, the to a torch song about, you know, the, the forgotten man, which mm -hmm. basically had to do with the people from World War II that every much World War I that everybody forgot. When a soldier does his military service and fights in a war after the war is over and no one cares about him anymore. There was a song about that. <laughs>